it's Froyal here. I'm so glad you've joined me. Today is going to be a little experimental. We're going to splash some paint around and I'm going to try a new technique on the jelly plate that I haven't tried before. So I hope you're going to stick around. Right, so this week I was working on my Skillshare class. Yes, there's a hundred days of collage. <laughs> I know, it's a bunch. You should come and join us. Anyway, I was rummaging through the cupboard and I pulled out this. Oh, it's got no label on it. <laughs> This incredible little Posca paint pen, which I hadn't used before, pulled it out, splashed it around on the gel plate, and let me tell you, I fell in love. Where have you been all my life? <laughs> I only had this one color. It made incredible prints on some beautiful textured rice paper that I was playing with. So then, yes, of course, I had to then buy myself a box. <laughs> Now, disclaimer, before we get into it, these are not cheap, not at all. So I want to know today if you think it's really worth the money. What can these massive Posca pens do? How do they create and how do we jelly print with them? Okay, so my brand new box, pretty excited if I can get into it. Straight from the art supply store. Ta -da, ta -da! Look at that. <laughs> Look at this. That's pretty fun. Yes, they will set you back a pretty penny, especially in beautiful New Zealand where everything's expensive. So we're going to have a look today. Is it really worth the money? What can we do with these? How can we create with these? And what kind of marks are they going to make? Right, so fresh out of the box. So first of all, you have to work out how to get into them. <laughs> Why is everything always in plastic? Then you have to give them a shake. Can you hear the ball inside rattling around? That means it's getting a good mix. And then we have to prime them. So how long does that take? I don't know. Oh, that didn't take very long. <laughs> Um, note to sell, they come out really fast. There's a lot of paint that's coming out. Look at that. Oh man, this is going to be a whole lot of fun. Okay, so they don't take much to prime. In fact, you don't have to like push on them. You know, like with normal Posca pens, you kind of have to push on them for like forever to get the paint to come down. Well, that didn't take any priming at all and it's already pouring out that's a pretty nice color yeah i'm liking that so i think that i'll just unwrap them all and then we're going to have a little play i've got some beautiful kozo paper here on my table so we're going to splash with that and then we're going to pull the gel plate out and let's see what kind of prints we can take on the gel plate Okay, so all the plastics off and they're all primed. They didn't take anything to actually prime them. What can we do with them now? I'm thinking, I'm thinking we can do anything we want. Have a look how fat they are. Absolutely beautiful. They make the most incredible abstract expressionist marks. I've got a beautiful piece of Kozo paper so it's quite thick and textured and it's soaking it up gloriously I just love it you probably should be able to blend the colors I'm thinking they're definitely fabulous for painting in big areas of color because look how fast it is to actually fill in some spaces that would work really good you can pretty much draw with them or write with them and they just have a really beautiful feel they're going to be absolutely fabulous for mark making, creating shapes. You could do a whole abstract painting just with these. You could probably do it straight on the canvas because look how easy it would be to actually create some shapes, fill in some areas really fast, very abstract expressionist. I just love it. But then I do like abstract expressionism. <laughs> So this would fill the paper very fast, very easy to fill in big shapes, big areas. I absolutely love it. But can we use them on the gel plate? 
Right, so I've got my 12 by 14 inch gel plate out. I know I'm pretty excited. <laughs> The paint flows so incredibly well. Look at this, look at this. Like within a few seconds, you could cover the whole plate. <laughs> it's just so much fun. Love abstract expressionism. And these really big, fat, beautiful, flowing paint markers. They're called paint markers. They are Posca brand, but they look like the old shoe polish. <laughs> type shapes <laughs> clearly it's a better color look at that i wonder if they blend i think they do like if you run them together that's actually going to blend well that's pretty cool you could actually get a really nice painting happening with these and really fast look my plates already filled up so I've got a piece of Kozo paper. This is beautiful and absorbent. So if we put that straight down, it really won't take much just to absorb all of that paint. I'm using this paper because I'm probably going to get myself really covered. <laughs> I'm quite sure. Oh, look at that. And ta-da! We've already got a fabulous painting Look at the lines in it. It's absolutely fabulous. See the marks? It makes incredible marks. Like it's just amazing for mark making because you can actually see the paint lines of it. I love it. I just love it. I know, you find that hard to believe. Let's put some black on there and get really dramatic because I think we could just put it back on and absorb up the black. What should we do? Should we do circles? Of course we should do circles. How could we not? But if we just did this, literally, just some marks on the gel plate and put that same painted piece back on, I'm pretty sure it's gonna absorb it back up again. Right? I think so. Yes, look at that. That's just fabulous. Look at that. That is so much fun. You could create really big paintings or backgrounds or textured mark making. And you can see the beautiful colors coming through the lines. They're just beautiful lines. I'm loving that. They work so well because they flow really fast with the paint. Comes out really easy. Okay, so is it worth it? That's the question. I think there would be a tendency to put dots on because look at the round marker on it. You do kind of want to do that. <laughs> so let's put some dots on and pull a print with this. As you can see, there's still a ghost print underneath there. So that'll be interesting to see if that comes back up again with this print or if it requires a different print to pull up the rest of the ghost print. Oh man, it's really fun. Now you don't have to buy this in a packet. I know I did because I'm like that, but you can actually buy them singularly like one of color if you just wanted to get a nice big fat black one, yes, uh, and use that to create marks on the gel plate and your background papers, that would work really well. So you could just buy one color without having to get the whole box, but you know, it's me we're talking about here. I had to get the whole box. <laughs> Let's try this paper. Now I'm pretty sure because this paint flows so well and so fast that you could blend it really easy and you could blend it on the plate. Because even these dots of paint is blending together and it would be really easy to create a full painting on the plate. Oh, that's just really fun. Look at that. Look how cool that looks. Okay, I'm going to leave that and I'm going to then pull it with something to get that up. Oh, that's fun. Okay, well, I think it's dry enough. It's a ghost print. It shouldn't take too long to dry. 
and I'm going to pull it with some golden iridescent silver. I know, I don't use silver a lot, but I'm figuring that the colors that are on the plate would work well with silver and also it'll be a nice and thin because it's the silver iridescent fine so that could possibly work and I say possibly work because we really don't know do we until we actually pull the print if it is going to work or not we can only hope for <laughs> For these things to work out now I'm using some wet strength tissue because I have some yes it was back in stock yes I know that's expensive too but for me because I tend to experiment a whole heap and I'll slap so much on the gel plate and demand that my paper pick it up that the wet strength tissue for me is really worth it I just get it from Amazon and if you want to know where to get it, have a look in the links in the description under the video. You'll find more information there. <laughs> right, let's see what it did. Let's see if it picked up all the paint. Better not tear on me now. <laughs> I really could have perhaps waited a bit longer for it to dry, but I'm never really that patient. Have a look at that, come straight off the plate. There we go, my fabulous painting with the beautiful Posca moppers. <laughs> I think it really is a game changer because you can do such big areas and you can do really painterly effects. You could put stencils on and add the paint through the stencils. You could create whole areas and the mark making is absolutely amazing. The beautiful marks and lines that it makes. Oh man, we need to play some more. Okay, I'm just going to create some beautiful abstract expressionist marks and then I'm gonna pull it off on a piece of wet strength tissue that I already painted. This is one of my absolutely favorite ways of creating collage paper. I put the tissue down. It doesn't have to be wet strength tissue. It can be ordinary tissue, dollar store tissue. Then I throw on acrylic paint or inks. You can use watercolor, but I really like the strength of the acrylic inks. And I especially like to empty out bottles that are almost finished. You fill it with water, pour it on the tissue. You have to wait for it to dry before you can move it. But then you have these absolutely glorious pieces like this. Yes, and you can use them for jelly printing or you can use them in collage or you can use them really for anything at all. Absolute favorite way of creating collage paper. So easy. I like to leave it on my table overnight and I especially love to pour on the bottoms of the bottles, especially the golden bottles. You know, the little fluid bottles. Oh, I love getting all of that pigment out because yes, everything costs so much. I know. I know. What did that do? Oh man, that's a little disappointing. I'm not very impressed with that at all. We'll have to do something else with it. Maybe I put on too much. I know, shock. So not like me to do that. Let's get a catalyst tool and put in some marks. Yeah, baby. <laughs> do, some, do some mark making with that and then we'll take a print. That's better. Maybe we'll just wait for that to dry and then I'll add mm, some more paint to it before we actually pull the print. I'm thinking so. What if we try the stencil idea? Look. Now, let me be honest with you. I've never tried this before. <laughs> I just bought these and I'm playing with them. So, you know, if something doesn't work, you don't leave me rude comments. <laughs> just, just go with me here. We're experimenting. We're like mad scientists. That's what we like to do. So I've got a stencil from Piamata Studio. Love them so much. And I'm going to put the paint on and see... Uh, how that goes. It can only not work, right? What does it really matter? We've still got the white on the plate. It's kind of mostly dry, but I'm just gonna put the paint on these dot areas. 
They're kind of random, roundish shapes, which works for me. I like that. And it's really easy to use the paint pen because it flows so well. It might be a little blobby, like it mightn't be the most perfect stencil because uh, of the way the paint flows out, but it's definitely worth trying, right? It's worth experimenting. You don't know till you try these things. And what does it matter if it doesn't work? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I'll just try something else. And it all becomes really cool collage paper. Anyway, look at that. Two seconds. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. Oh, I want to put this on another piece of paper so I can use up all of that paint. So we'll just put it there, flip it over on there like that. Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty all right. It's pretty all right. I knew it would be smudgy. No idea if I even got it in the same place as before, but <laughs> it'll be there somewhere, right? It'll be on the paper somewhere. It will be smudgy. The whole thing will be smudgy because it's paint and I'm splashing it around and then I'm rubbing paper on it. <gasps> but it could be quite cool. I don't mind that. That's looking all right. What do we think? What do we think? You know what? This needs some copper. Let's let that dry and throw some copper ink on it because, oh, maybe we'll do some black first. Yeah, okay, we're gonna get dramatic. Going to get dramatic. So just giving this a little bit of a wipe here on my paper on the side. <laughs> How cool is that? That took a really nice print. That's because it's the Kozo paper. It's really absorbent and rather beautiful. So. Wow, winning on that. Looks a little smudgy on there. It doesn't matter. It's another layer of paint. But look how cool the print is from the excess that we put on the paper just to clean off the stencil. Man, that's pretty. Now I am waiting in between these layers. You can see that the paint is mostly dry. <laughs> Maybe not entirely, but mostly. Look how easy it is to write lines and scribbles and... Oh man, you could do so much. Loving that. You can make them even fatter, thicker, thinner, depending on how much you want to squeeze it. But it does flow out really, really easy, just so you know. Um, you possibly could pour it all over the place if you really squeezed it too hard. Really is quite endless what you could do with it. We really are only limited by our imagination and how willing we are to actually experiment. See, look how cool that is. Look at my print. It's really coming along nicely. <laughs> that printed up well with those lines. What else do we want to add to it? I'm thinking I'm liking it this way. That's pretty cool. Well, I might leave this paper and just add some copper onto the edges of that. What do I want to add onto this? You know, I could possibly just pull this. I'll let the black lines dry and then we'll pull it with something. Now, how about we add some of my favorite iridescent bronze fine to pull this print and see if we can get all that fabulous paint up off the plate. I love experimenting. It really is a whole lot of fun and it doesn't matter if it all goes to custard. You've got to at least try. You just don't know. Sometimes you find the most amazing techniques by trying different experiments and even if the first few don't work. It's all part of the process. Oops, my tissue only just got to the edge. <laughs> I'm really not good at putting on paper very straight at all. I think I might leave it for a couple of minutes because it's got to pull up all that paint that's already dried on the plate underneath it. So let's give it a few minutes this time instead of pulling it up straight away. And then we'll see if it fares any better. Oh, I could finish the other piece of paper. That'd be cool. All right, let's do that. So what about we have a little play with this one? I'm figuring if we just added a bit more of that copper around the edge, 
and brought it into the print area, I'm figuring it's gonna look amazing, won't take very much, and it'll make fabulous collage paper. Just a few little touch-ups. Oh yeah, baby. Just like that, too easy. Lemon squeezy. Love it. Now I've got this on a plastic file folder. It's called an L pocket. It's an A3 size. Yeah, you might not be in a country that understands that, but it's a plastic folder and then I split them. I open them up so that when I'm doing things like this or even creating the colored tissue, I can move it, right? I can pick it up now and take it off my desk. <laughs> I'm not stuck here waiting for it to dry. I really like them, I use them all the time. They're absolutely fabulous, especially if you're doing this kind of thing where you've got something really, really wet and you wanna leave it wet, it's really good to put it on the file folder so that you can then move it and keep working, right? Because we've gotta go back to our print now and pull it off the plate. Okay, let's see how it looks. Let's see how well these Posca pen paints actually pull up off the plate. Did I leave it long enough? Well, that's the question. That's always the question. Ah, uh, not too bad, not too bad. It's coming off fairly easy. And it's pulling up the layers right to the bottom, so that's always fun. Love it when that works. And it's got a few layers there because yes, I kept adding more and more to it. So look how cool that looks. That's the first layer there with the white that I scribbled on with the catalyst tool. And then we've got the red, which was almost a stencil. <laughs> and, then, and then a little bit of the black, pretty fun. <laughs> but it pulled up. So that was really what I wanted to see. If we put multiple layers on the plate with the pretty thick painterly application of the Posca pens, is it going to pull up? And the answer is yes, it does, which is pretty, pretty cool. It opens up a whole realm of possibilities. I mean, you could actually paint the whole plate. Take a print, take another print, and then take a ghost print because it has that kind of quantity of paint that comes out of the Posca pen. Right, what else are we gonna do? So I'm going to test that theory. What happens if we put a heap of the paint on the plate, like painting, like, hello, look at that. That looks amazing. Will we actually get it off? Will it come off? <laughs> Will it ever come off? <laughs> I don't know. How many prints can we take with this paint on the plate before it runs out? And look, it blends. I'm smudging it together and it blends really nicely, although you're probably going to dirty your tip. But other than that, that's pretty cool. Look how cool that looks. Yeah, it blends really easy. Really, really easy. It flows really easy, it flows really nice. I really like them. I know they're expensive, but I really like them. So this has just got a mark on it from some mark making activities. What happens if I put that on the plate with all of that thick, juicy paint? Oh, it all smudged together. <laughs> Oh, that color's really beautiful. And look at that, you can still see the black line. All right, I have to finish up this end of the paper. I actually didn't expect it to all smudge together like that. I thought it might have held its lines a bit more, but it didn't, man, what a painting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That creates huge backgrounds really fast. So look at the beautiful paint that's left on there. What are we gonna mop that up with? Hmm, I've got this piece. This is just a piece of sketch paper that I pulled out of one of those visual diaries. Cause you know, who actually finishes them right to the end? 
dad's like, not me. So I pull all the papers out in the end and then I use them for whatever I want to use them for. Gee, that colour's nice. Let's see if that picks it up. It's not hugely absorbent paper, but it might be all right. Oh, it's not too bad, not too bad. Oh, it's picking it up better than I thought it would. Oh, wow, look at that. Yes, so it does create huge, big areas of colour. Really quick, really easy. And it blend, they blend really well together. So, you know, there you go. Something else we now know. I'm going to have to add to this piece, aren't I? Yes, just this one. Just one more. <laughs> one more. What will we add to it? Shame they haven't got any gold or metallic copper <laughs> or one of the other colours that I'm obsessed with. That's pretty nice marks. I'm liking that very much. So we're going to have to put something on it to create some dramatic contrast. What colour will we use? Do we want black or white or blue? Really, that's all our options are. Okay, well, white's not going to do much. Black it is then. Let's add some black marks to it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. What about if we just do a little bit of a dance across the gel plate? Add some mark making. Just like that. Put the print back on. No, it's not dry, it's still wet. <laughs> but I want to see what it's going to do. Oh, straight on, straight off. Now that's just fun. Look at the beautiful marks in that. Look at the line. Yes, I'm loving this. These are just absolutely fabulous. Look how cool that looks. The potential is huge. Possibilities are endless. Yes, they will set you back a few dollars, but I think they're fabulous. They're great for an abstract expressionist, painterly application. You really could do so much with them on the gel plate, but also off the gel plate if you wanted to paint on canvas or paper or create collage papers and mark making, anything. They work really, really well. They've got a beautiful flow, really nice paint, nice and thick. They blend well together. So, you know, what can I say? I love them. It's definitely this week's new favourite thing. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. Wasn't that a whole lot of fun? I know, I get a little excited and carried away, but I absolutely love it. I love the potential and what we can create. I really love experimenting. So if you want to know more information, you'll find it in the description under the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see what crazy ideas I might come up with next week. <laughs> and I'll leave you with this video because I know it's gonna help you with your art making. So happy creating, see you next time in the studio.